Hey, it's me again. I keep getting hit with all of these things. Um, with each sermon or with each conversation that I have with the Lord, um, I just keep sharing. Maybe you need to say that. You didn't say that. And so uh, I just listened to Elevation, Stephen Furtick, and uh, his message was, God will do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And um, one thing that he had said that, that spoke, um, and will speak to you most likely, is that you know that one that got away or you know that situation that you keep playing in your head of like, I lost that. I, I, I really lost that. And you, you're so stuck. You, you can't move forward um, because you keep thinking, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I lost it and everything's over because I lost that one. Um, he was sharing about his friend, how, um, his friend kept saying that, you know, well, like a fisherman, he kept saying like that, that fish got away. Um, and finally he said, I said, it didn't get away. It didn't get away. It just got you ready for the next. Um, and that like is such a revelation is like we as humans, we ruminate, we get fixated on certain things, certain sin in our life that we can't seem to get past. And, um, but Jesus uh, is a God, uh, well, God is um, a God of again. And that if he did it once, he'll do it again. And um, there was a song I was trying to find that Elevation was singing today. Um, so if you have a moment, go watch Elevation Worship, uh, Elevation Church, Stephen Furtick. Uh, his message today is, is very, very good. And he's one of the ones I also follow. But um, he talked about how if God will part the sea, he'll do it again. If God will, um, I wrote some of this down. If he stilled the storm, he'll do it again. If he calls the walls to fall, he, you know, he'll do it again. If he moved the stone and he caused it to roll away, he'll do it again. If he um, calls bones to come back alive, he'll do it again. If he raised Lazarus from the dead, he'll do it again. So God's faithfulness uh, is that he will continue to do things again and again. And he talked about how we... Uh, he used cussing, for example, of how, like, say you cuss and you, like, can't seem to get it. But it, but you're telling God, help me, help me, help me. Uh, and then you pray and say, okay, God, help me when I go to say this, stop me. And so maybe you get half of the word out. And you say uh, part of it and then you stop. And, and God says, yes, you know, that's what it is. Like, yes, like, you will keep tripping up. Uh, it's not until you, you get to a place where you're allowing God to help you uh, and, and take that under submission and um, you continually uh, continue to try again and again and again and again and again until finally, yeah, you got it. Okay, and that's also with patterns and routines. It takes so many days before something becomes a habit or routine. I think that's 19 or 21 or something like that in a book I read. But, you know, it doesn't just happen automatically. It takes us trying again. Um, I know in my life I'm trying to not to think about certain things. Um, uh, my mind just keeps taking me back to that place. And I just have to say, okay, Lord, help me when those thoughts come to my head. Just help me to divert my attention somewhere else. And so slowly I'm getting there. Um, it's getting easier and... Um, you know, it's working. And so, but it takes intentionality. Once again, it takes our part to pray the prayer and to uh, be disciplined to stop it. Okay. But God is going to come and be faithful and he will do it again. And he used um, the prodigal son, uh, you know, uh, that uh, scripture where, uh, you know, one of the sons uh, wanted all of his inheritance and he went off and he spoke blew it all and he lived in sin and you know he ended up being alone and like eating in the pig's trough and then he came to himself and said you know what if I just go home 
and beg my father basically to become a servant. They eat better than me. Um, and so he is playing in his head that his father is against him. And so, you know, we sometimes um, think that God's against us or that um, that person's against us or whatever. And it, it keeps us stuck that we... Uh, but God is a God of grace. So, and 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 people are a God, are show grace, and we show forgiveness. And and so we keep telling ourselves, you know, that that's just never going to be. Um, they, you know, they won't accept me back, or they won't forgive me, or they won't this, or they won't that, or I can't do that, or I can't stop smoking, or I can't stop cussing, or I can't stop you know, um, watching what I shouldn't watch or I can't, you know, so we tell ourselves that we can't, you know what? We really can't, but God can, and God has been faithful in doing it again and again and again. And if you can recollect in your life times that you thought, I can't do that, but yet God delivered you from that because you kept trying and you kept trying and you finally succeeded. And that's the word finally succeeded. You didn't give up. You didn't stop. You continuously chased after the thing that you were desiring. And he said something back. Well, I'll say it, but then I want to go back to prodigal son. Anyway, the father opened arms. He asked, you know, his servants to go, go get the biggest calf and let's uh, go get, you know, the robe and, and go get all of this. We're going to party. We're going to celebrate. And that's how, how God is with you is when you return, when you accomplish something um and when you have gone away from him and you want to come home guys you can come home he's welcoming you with open arms and not only is he welcoming with you open arms but he is celebrating he is celebrating that you have the victory that you have won over sin that you you are giving it to him and that you're wanting to come home again he doesn't hold it against you and he doesn't hold the past and say you know all those 99 times you did this you know all that because don't you know people in your life that have said well you did this and you did this and you did that and you did that and you know i don't trust you i don't believe you you haven't changed you'll continue to do that you know what guys god's not like that people are but god's not god doesn't look at the past seasons in your life and the past sins in your life he looks at where you are now and he looks at your heart condition now and he knows it and he knows you and he says you know what i believe you come to me and he opens his arms and he doesn't hold it against you actually that sin if you ask for forgiveness he wipes it he doesn't not only not bring it up okay but it's he says he he forgets it so for you to continuously ask him for forgiveness over one thing if you were in a heart, heart posture where you were really authentic and real and truthful asking God to forgive you, you don't have to keep asking. He's already forgiven you the first time. You don't. He's not like people. He's not like where you have to beg them or ask them. And you know what? You don't have to do that with people too. I'm just going to tell you. Don't keep pro trying to prove yourself to people. Don't keep trying to get someone to see that you've changed. God knows your heart. He sees it. The fruits are evident. You don't need a validation from someone else. Just God. Okay? So God's not like man. Even though he sent Jesus to become man, he's not like him. Um, he was perfect. And he did it right. And he knows. And so with that in your mind and your faith, you have to have that faith to believe. You know, it is that mindset. It's the renewing of the mind. Trusting what God says in his word to be real and to be truth. And when you believe it and you harbor, you know, you take it into your heart and you really believe it, it's transformational. It is so transformational. Um, you know, like it's like poof, crazy wild. Um, but, you know, God, God is a God that forgives again and again and again and again. He doesn't count. He doesn't keep track of your record. Um, that's not important to him. The future, where you are now and where he wants to take you is what's important, okay? The past lies behind you. There's no future there. And I posted something on Facebook about how 
the rear view mirror, mirror is really small compared to the front mirror. The front um, window is huge because where you need to see ahead of you is far greater than what you see behind you. And, that, and that's what God sees too, guys. In your life, the best is yet to come. It's not what lies the, behind. Those were lessons, okay? Those were things that are building you to become the best that, uh, you know, not just only the best, but uh, preparing you for the mission and the purpose that God has for you. All of that, it took all of that took all of those seasons in your life to get you ready, to get you ready for the great things that God's going to do in your life. Um, I took some notes, uh, you know, he, he talked about how he said, this is a kind of a morbid thought. Um, but he said that he asked himself, if I lost what matters most to me in my life, what would I give to get it back? And he talked about God and his salvation. Um, what would he do to get that back? And he said, I would do everything. And that causes him to reflect on everything he has. Because everything that God's given him, that helps him to live in a state of gratitude and thankfulness, that he would give all of it to get that back. And then he said the next greatest thing in his life was Holly. And that Holly was a lot like the Lord, um, that, that she, um, was that to him. And, and I think that one, that's great, uh, to have that somebody that, uh, you feel that way about and that believes in you and knows your heart and doesn't judge you and doesn't look at you, um, in a different light, but really, um, sees good in you and, um, he said, what would I do to get Holly back if I lost Holly? And he said, I would give everything. And so once again, he reflected on all of the things that God has given him. And then he said his family. And so what I took from that was, was so, so, so powerful. Is he, his greatest thing wasn't his job that if he lost, it, it wasn't his, um, friends. It wasn't his ministry. Um, the greatest thing that meant something to him was number one, God, which that's his proper place. And number two, his wife and his family that really hit hard with me. Um, in just, uh, dealing with, you know, my life and, and, and the things that's happened in my life and and just um, you know it's like those are priorities guys those are the top priorities in your life and if you're married please make them that please don't take your mate and your children for granted um, you know because sometimes when you lose them you can't get them back um, you know, not everybody, uh, can, can get back what they've lost. Um, and you know, if you can't, then I pray that you've learned some really valuable lessons, um, in that loss, uh, because, you know, it, it serves a purpose. God uses it all. And so the message is really good. Um, I'm definitely not a pastor, nor can I speak and say all that he did. Um, but I want to say, you know, go watch that message, Elevation. Uh, and I hope you have a great day. I, I believe this is my last video for the day. But you never know. All right. Have a great day. Thanks.